Learning objective number five, use process costing in a second or later production department. So what we just learned is how to account for the money going into the first or initial process. And now we're gonna see how that works going into second and later departments. So there's the same five step process that we've already learned. Uh, separately consider the costs transferred into the department or the transferred in costs. This is from the second department's perspective. So here's how it would look when we're reviewing the process uh, costing for the insertion department. And when we were doing the journal entries, we moved from the, we were moving from the shaping department to the insertion department. So looking at it from the insertion department perspective, you have a start here. Well, whenever you start, you have a whole bunch of production that comes from the first process into your process, into the insertion department. And that was a transfer in from the shaping, shaping department. So let's assume here that 40,000 units were transferred in. And so we have 40,000 that goes into and they're moving through the process. This is from the start to the end, the completion. And of the 40,000, uh, 38,000 masks were finished and transferred out. It goes on to say that we had 7,000 masks that were started but not completed ending work in process. That seems a little confusing, but let's, we'll take a look. We might have had a beginning inventory. No, we'll see right now. So we had 40,000 that were shipped in and we still have, and we finished 38 and then we had 7,000 left over. So I'm looking at the 38 plus the seven. That means we really have to account for 45,000 masks, but it's telling us that only 40,000 were transferred in. So let's keep looking at this. All right, oh, here we go. So the beginning work in process on October 1st, uh, we had 5,000 masks that were in the beginning work in process. So when October 1 hit, rather when September 30th finished, we cut off, we cut, we cut off what we had produced at September 30th, opened up October 1st in the morning, and we had 5,000 masks that were in process, they weren't complete yet. Then we had another 40,000 that were transferred from the shaping department. And now that starts to make sense for us because we have the 5,000 that we started, the 40,000 that were transferred in, and then as that previous slide showed, we had 38,000 that transferred out, and that left us with 7,000 masks that are still in work in process at October 31st. Now, those are uh, what we just looked at was from a units perspective. Then we look at it from a dollars perspective. Well, we had beginning work in process on October 1st. So our beginning balance was $23,100. Now that $23,100 was made up of transferred in costs of $22,000 and we put another $1,100 of conversion costs. We added that to the 22,000 that had been previously transferred in, but you know it was still in work in process. We hadn't finished it, so that the total dollar amounts we're accounting for for the beginning for the beginning balance as of October 1st was 23,100. Then we had the transferred in of 40,000 units, and so with that came the costs. So we had $176,000 that came in from the shaping department. And then, then we added our direct materials, and that was a total of $19,000. Then we added in another $3,710 of direct labor, another $9,225 of manufacturing overhead. So our total conversion costs, now that have been added to our production during the month of October was $12,935.
So if we had a beginning balance of $23,100, we added uh, $176,000 transferred in. We have uh, another $19,000 of direct materials and conversion costs of $12,935 were added in. Now we have a total of, to account for of $231,035. So now the insertion department, this second department has a total of $231,035 that it has to then split between 38,000 that have been transferred out and the 7,000 that still remains in work in process inventory. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use a spreadsheet similar to what we've used before. So we'll use a, a spreadsheet or a schedule to summarize everything that helps us account for everything. We have the CView insertion department month ended October 31st flow of production. And then the first step is the flow of physical units. And the first thing we need to do is units to account for. So the beginning work in process. Well, we had 5,000 units that we started off with. We're gonna to add to that transferred in during October. And if you recall, that was 40,000 units. So the total physical units to account for, pretty straightforward, that's gonna be 45,000. We then go to units accounted for, completed and transferred out during October. Well, according to the notes, if you recall, we had 38,000. 38,000 that were completed and transferred out. And we're gonna add to that Ending work in process October 31st. And if you recall, you can go back to the slides to remember if you need to, it's 7,000. And then we have total physical units accounted for. And same kind of deal, we're gonna add this up. And obviously this, and this should be equal. And then down here, if you recall, we did this before. We're gonna look at total equivalent units. And we're gonna do that as part of step two. We move on to step two, and this step two requires us to compute our equivalent units. And so we need to take the information that, it, that we are accounting for and then apply them to equivalent units. As an example here, completed and transferred out during October, or there were, that's what's new here. This column is new, we have transferred in. There were 38,000 units that were transferred in. Uh, and it, it, it was part of what came in and in all of what comes in from, from any other process in this example here would be from the shaping department that has to be transferred in. So 38,000 came in, they all came out. Now, because these are completed, remember this is the row we're looking at, the completed and transferred out, then this has to be 38,000 equivalent units for direct materials, because that's finished, and then 38,000 for conversion costs, because that's finished as well. Now, in terms of the ending inventory, well, we had 7,000 units to account for, of which 7,000 had to be transferred in. 7,000 had to be transferred in. Now, in terms of direct materials, in this example here, we're gonna put zero. And I'm gonna put a little asterisk here because this could be confusing unless it's clear. Um, we're gonna assume, this is different from the other assumption, we're assuming that we're assuming, uh, assume that direct materials are added at the end of the process, all right? 
So if this is still in work in process, it's not finished, and direct materials are only added at the end of the process, then that means that in terms of equivalent units, nothing's been added yet because it's still in work in process and not until we finish it does all the uh, materials get added. So assume direct materials are added at the end of the process. That means in terms of direct materials, the equivalent units is zero. So for conversion costs, let's assume that work in process is 30% complete. All right, so 30% complete for conversion. Therefore, if we have 7,000 units that have been transferred in, and they're only 30% complete. So in terms of equivalent units for conversion costs, we have 2,100 units. And the way we get, we get this is by taking 7,000 units and multiplying it by 30%. That should give you 2,100 units. Okay, so we sum this all up. We have 45,000 transferred in. We have 38,000 of direct materials equivalent units. And then we have conversion costs of 40,100 of equivalent units. This step two outlines exactly how we compute everything. We can review it, we just went through it, so. Moving on to step three, we then look at summarizing the total costs. So we have beginning work in process, October 1st, you can go back in and look at exhibit 511. And in that we had $22,000, $22,000 that were transferred in. This is from CBU's insertion department. This is the dollar amounts. They, the transferred in cost for $22,000. That's where that dollar amount came from. Direct materials were zero. Conversion costs were $1,100. And the total was $23,100. Going back to that schedule, $22,000, we talked about that. $1,100 for conversion. And the beginning balance for, for the insertion department was $23,100. We need to add costs, costs added during October. There were $176,000 that were added. Uh, $19,000 for direct materials were added as well. And $12,935 we're added for conversion costs. Those dollar amounts come from the same schedule that we had looked at. It said we had transferred in from the shaping department $176,000. $176,000 that were transferred in. We then added another $19,000 of direct materials. This was provided here in this in the schedule, 19,000 added for direct materials. Another uh, addition of direct labor and manufacturing overhead, which are the conversion costs of $12,935. And then we add transferred in direct materials and conversion costs to have a total amount of added costs during October of $207,935. Then gives us our total costs to count for. 198,000 transferred in, 19,000 of direct materials, and 14,000 of $35 for conversion costs. When we add this across, we end up with $231,035, which, which is equal to the summary of the cost, the cost information that was provided in the previous schedule, $231,035. Next, we're gonna divide by the total equivalent units, and that's from step two. For transferred in, we came up with 45,000. 
direct materials was 38,000. And conversion costs, 40,100. We picked up those numbers from step two, 45,000 total transferred in, 38,000 direct materials and 40,100 for conversion costs. Our cost per equivalent unit, we're gonna take the 198,000 the total cost to account for and divide it by 45,000. So that's $4.40 for transferred in, 50 cents for direct materials and 35 cents for conversion costs. We then move to step number five, which would be assigning total cost to units completed and the units in ending work in process inventory. So equivalent units completed and transferred out, we get this from step number two. We have 38,000 for transferred in, 38,000 for direct materials, 38,000 for conversion. Those numbers are coming from here, completed and transferred out during October, 38, 38, and 38. Multiplied by cost per equivalent unit, step number four, we have $4.40 here, 0.5 here, and 0.35. That came from step number four. Cost per equivalent unit for 40.5 and 0.35. We then look to account for costs assigned to units completed and transferred out. Take 38,000, multiply by 440. So transferred in is 167,200. 19,000 for direct materials. And 13.3 for conversion. And then run a total here. 199,500. So th that's accounting for the completed and transferred out. Now we have to account for the ending work in process. We're going to list the equivalent units in ending work in process. And just like above, it's the same, the numbers come from step two. And those numbers are 7,000, zero, and 2,100. And step two shows for work in process, 7,000, zero, and 2,100 which is what we're using here, 7, 0, 2100. And we're gonna use the same numbers that we got up here. We're gonna move those again. It's the equivalent unit, cost per equivalent unit that we had used before. That's gonna give us the cost assigned, cost assigned to units in ending whip work in process. So we get 30,800 for transferred in, zero for direct materials, and 735 for conversion costs. The total is 31,535. And so we add up the totals, we come up with 231,035. And that represents the total costs so this is the last schedule that we'll use step number five in assigning total costs. So based upon that information, we can then look and see that we have unit costs and the gross profit. The cost of making one mask is $5.25. How do we come up with that? We take the $199,500 and divide that by 38,000. $4.40 from the shaping department is what actually came in. And then we added another 85 cents from the insertion department. We look at the previous step five, we had $4.40 transferred in, 
and 50 cents plus 35 cents, which is the 85 cents we've added to using conversion costs and the direct materials come up to 85 cents. So 440 plus the 85 cents come up to 525. So another way of looking at the costs, we can do the direct computations using the total dollar amounts or looking at the specific cost per equivalent unit. So let's assume that C view sells the mask for $10 each. If the sales revenue are uh, really for per unit, it's going to be $10. We can subtract the 525 as the cost of goods sold, and they will make $4.75 as a gross profit. So everything that we've just done is summarized into the steps listed. That's on the slide 41. There's nothing really new here. That's just showing the five steps all in one spreadsheet, but you can see where the numbers travel from. So that makes it easier. It's easier to see the flow of the numbers and how they flow through each step. And so here we'll look at the journal entries associated with the second processing department. And in this example here, we're looking at costs incurred in the insertion department. This month include raw materials of 19,000, wages of $3,710, and MOH of 92.25. So we're gonna add all three of these, and that's gonna be a total of, total of $31,935. That's gonna be debited to work in process insertion, and the credits are gonna go accordingly to the accounts that are impacted by the removal of raw materials from inventory, wages payable, and the manufacturing overhead. So I'll continue on with just updating that T account that I had looked at or that we had used before. We're at the work in process of insertion. We're going to debit that for 31,935. We're going to credit raw materials for $19,000, call that number five. We're gonna credit wages payable, 3710, and then manufacturing overhead is gonna be credited 9225. So we had the $176,000 come over from the transfer from the shaping department, and then we added another $31,935. The next journal entry says we took 199,500 worth of masks were completed and transferred out to the finished goods inventory. We're going to debit finished goods inventory 1995 and then we're going to credit work in process for 1995. So go to the T accounts. Go ahead and just run down just a little bit here. So finished goods inventory is going to get 199.5, and we're going to credit work in process insertion 199.5, and so that's how the uh, journal entries are going to work. Um, in terms of the balances, we won't know what the materials balances are because we didn't have this. So it is what it is. Um, manufacturing overhead, we didn't have the debits, so we don't know the actual cost. So that's got to be compute. Uh, that can't be computed. But in this case, we can come up with what we ended up for the work in process and the balance. Let's take in all of the debits. We're going to sum up all the debits here. And then we're going to subtract the credit that was transferred to the shaping. So we ended up with an ending, an ending balance of $32,000. And then we'll do something, the same thing here. We're going to sum up work in process for insertion, the debits, and then we're going to subtract the credits, which end up representing what was passed on to the finished goods. So uh, we ended up with $8,435 as a debit to the insertion department. And finally, the finished goods ends up with $199,500. Wages payable, I guess we could get the ending balance there, assuming we haven't paid anything yet. So. This would just simply be the sum of the credits, and that's what we got. 
All right, so that was the final journal entry and that completes chapter five.